Hi, welcome to Just Off The Highway. I'm El Projus. I'm in Mpumalanga province in South Africa, near the town of Sabi. About 150 years ago, this was the site of a major gold rush. Today, it's one of the largest man-made forests in the world, mainly because of the demand for those wooden pit props in the old mines. The logging has stayed, even though the gold is gone. I'm looking for a connection between a famous story and a place that's supposed to be here because it's in the guidebooks, but local people don't seem to know about it anymore, which is kind of weird. But I'm going to search and see what pans out. In the meantime, folks, if you're enjoying Just Off The Highway, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons because it unleashes the algorithm and good magic happens all around. And if you can help me make more of the kind of content that you like by joining as a member, if you do, you'll get regular exclusive bonus features. Just go to buy me a coffee slash LProgers and add your support. It's totally secure and you determine exactly how much you'd like to tip. Right, here comes the famous bit of the legend. In the 1880s, a young man named Percy Fitzpatrick came drifting through this country when it was still wild, prospecting for gold, working as a transport rider, hunting, living a life of pure adventure. So in later years, he became a hugely successful businessman, a controversial politician. But if that's all he'd done, at most he'd probably have some obscure street named after him to give today's politicals something to argue over. Instead, Percy Fitzpatrick's name is remembered around the world because he adopted a dog, a mongrel, who was the runt of the litter, nicknamed the Little Rat. Young Fitzpatrick described him as looking more like a tok-toki beetle than a puppy. And the other men in the camp thought that this odd-shaped, ugly pup was a disgrace, it should be drowned. But Percy Fitzpatrick couldn't bear that. Although he was offered the pick of the litter, he felt a strange bond with this little fellow and he rescued him. And that dog repaid that kindness many times over. Fitzpatrick had at last struck gold and he didn't even know it. He named the puppy Jock and that puppy grew up to be Jock of the Bushveld, the most famous dog in the history of South Africa. And now for the bit that's a bit missing. I'm here at the famous Mac Mac Falls. Now, on the other side of the falls, there's a road, and that's called the R532 between Sabi and Hraskop. And the site that I'm actually looking for is just on the other side of that road somewhere. I'm going to have to go and look for it. This is supposed to be the memorial to those gold rush days. I had to search for it a bit uh, in amongst the grass and the weeds. <laughs> it's literally just a few meters off the highway. I came here to find a bronze plaque commemorating Jock, but it's been lost or stolen probably for its scrap metal value and the rest of the memorial has been vandalized or simply neglected to the point that it's not much more than a ruin. This memorial depicts those dangerous old routes and hazards that the miners and transport riders had to negotiate more than a century ago. It was built to allow you to situate yourself in the landscape, to look in all directions and feel history come alive along these paths where Jock and his humans actually walked. And this site was actually chosen because it's believed to be exactly where Percy Fitzpatrick had a life and death struggle to save a wagon and oxen and its occupants from the raging, flooding Mac Mac River. <laughs> the wagon must have been pretty beaten up after that ordeal. And I suppose that just makes this destroyed wagon wheel centerpiece even more authentic. 
Somebody did make an effort to keep Jock's legacy alive in this area because just up that hill, there's now a statue of Jock. It's in a caravan and campsite. And the people are friendly and they let me see it. It's a bit worse for wear, but I guess at least it's safe on their property. And I suppose that's the best we can hope for. Sometimes going just off the highway is, is sad and frustrating. I mean, this monument was supposed to be an interactive experience. And it's just sad. Let's get out of here. Okay, I've calmed down a bit. Now I believe I've discovered an even better link between Jock of the Bushveld and something positive that we can take away to make our lives more meaningful today. For that, I'm going to need to head back to Johannesburg. So memorials can be destroyed. Stories are the safest way of preserving memories, even making them portable so that you never lose them no matter where you travel. Stories are tougher than stone. Okay. So I hope you'll join me for the next episode. I found out about a genuinely remarkable bit of good luck that made Jock Story world famous. And I've got hold of a genuine artifact, a piece of history that I'd like to show you. And then we'll look down the river into the future. See you next time.